what we're going to be going over here is preferred stock and we look at its dividends, convertibility, and issuing preferred stock. And we're just going to go through a basic example here to understand what this preferred stock is here. So what we're going to look at here is where Corporation A has the following stock outstanding. And they're going to have some preferred stock and also some common stock. But we're going to be looking at three independent situations here with this preferred stock. We're going to have some uh, cumulative preferred. We're going to have some dividend payments and then we're going to have a convertible preferred where we're going to convert it over into common stock and then we're just going to look at how we would issue preferred stock here. So first for our preferred stock there's going to be ten, involved 10,000 shares here. It's going to have a hundred dollar par value on it and it's going to have an eight percent par dividend rate. And for the first uh, case we're going to look at here is a cumulative preferred where there's going to be two years of dividends in arrears on this preferred stock here and then we're going to look at a uh, second case here convertible preferred where, where you're going to convert this preferred stock into seven shares of common stock and we're going to convert 3,000 shares of preferred stock into this common stock and we're going to assume uh, for simplicity here that the preferred stock is issued at its par value here and the third case we'll look at here is where the preferred stock is going to be issued at $109 per share where the par value again is a is a, at $100 per share and just for our reference here, common stock, we're going to have 50,000 shares here, $5 par value, and it's going to be issued here at $30 per share here. So first let's look at um, the dividend feature here on this preferred stock, on this cumulative preferred stock. Really we've got two features to look at when you're talking about these dividends here. You either have the cumulative preferred stock or the non-cumulative preferred stock. So first for our cumulative cumulative preferred stock that we're going to look at here. Now, if a corporation fails to pay dividends in any year, it must make up it in later years here before paying any dividends to the common stockholder. So that's what our cumulative preferred stock is all about here. And if the dividends here in the later years are not yet paid, the dividends are going to be in arrears and they have to be paid here for those earlier year dividends that haven't been paid on this cumul cumulative preferred stock. Now with non compute cumulative preferred stock here, past dividends are lost forever. They don't have to be paid here. So non-cumulative preferred stock, you don't, any of those previous payments that the company didn't make, they don't have to pay them here. Okay, so for our example here, uh, preferred stock dividends here, they're going to be paid based on the uh, par value here. And in our example, we got a hundred dollar par value on a share of this preferred stock here. And you can either pay these dividend payments, it could be stated on the stock either as a percentage of the par value in that the case we're going to be looking at here it's eight percent here of its par value or a specific dollar amount per share here and that would equate to like eight dollars per share here instead of the percentage amount so let's look at an example that we were, we were talking about here first for our dividends in arrear so now remember in this example we had two years here that hadn't been paid on dividends for this cumulative preferred stock here so we have to we would have to pay those first here so again we had those ten thousand shares here at a hundred dollar par amount here times eight percent a dividend rate times the two years here in arrears as they call it those have to be paid so that uh, equates to a hundred and sixty thousand dollars that has to be paid here and that's the dividends in arrears those are the two years that hadn't been paid here. Now let's just look at the case here where the current year dividend would also have to be paid. As again that's 10,000 shares here based on that hundred dollar par amount. Again 8% dividend rate and that's for one year that equates to $80,000. So the do total dividend payable that we have here would be the uh, two years in arrears here of 160000 plus the current year's dividend here of 80000 for a total uh, payable amount here of $240,000. Okay. Well, okay, so we've calculated that here for both our uh, dividends in arrears and the current year dividends. So how would this here be reported on the um, financial statement? So that's that's the question that we have to sit and we have to resolve here. Now, we don't, when we we can look at it down here, we, normally you'd have a dividends payable set up here and for a preferred stock, in this case it would be for preferred stock liability. But we don't actually record this on our financial statements. What we do is we just disclose it in a note to the, on the shareholders equity section of the financial statement. It's not reported as a liability here. This dividends payable would be a, a, a liability here on the balance sheet. But we only put it as a note here to shareholders equity because it in the, 
it does not assure the payment here even though it's a we've got this preferred stock the payment has to be made ahead of the common stock it's not really assured so if it's not really assured here uh, it really wouldn't it wouldn't have to be paid although the in this case the board of directors declared uh, would have declared uh, a payment here on this preferred stock but uh, because it's not assured the payment is assured you don't set it up as a liability here all you do is put it in a note to your in your shareholders equity here to your financial payment so it's, the um, payment here is not assured but it assures that the uh, preferred stock dividend payment is paid before any common stock dividend payments are made so just remember that here preferred stock has to be paid ahead of any common stock so that's that's what we're talking about here um, even though it isn't assured here it is assured that it's going to be paid before the common stock here so that would be a note in our financial statements now this uh, preferred stock looks a lot like uh, a liability or a debt investment here but it really isn't um, you issue preferred stock instead of debt here or bonds to keep the debt to equity ratio lower so that's really the reason here using a preferred stock it interest or the dividend payment has to be paid ahead of your common stock but uh, it's not really assured here so that's why you would uh, disclose it as a note to your shareholders equity here and it looks a lot like a debt instrument here but instead it remains as an equity instrument here on your financial statements okay so now let's go up and let's look at the convertibility feature here and just go through a basic example and this is where we're going to talk about convertible preferred and this is the case where we're going to convert this preferred stock here convertible preferred preferred stock into seven shares of common stock and there's going to be 3,000 shares of preferred stock converted and we're going to just assume here that the preferred stock is issued at its par amount so we have easy calculations here so uh, this is what we would do to record that here so we had our preferred stock here and that's an equity here on our balance sheet here it's not a liability so the perf preferred stock was issued here at par we had those 10,000 shares at a hundred dollar par amount so uh, it would be issued here we'd have credit our preferred stock here at that hundred dollar par amount here for one million dollars okay so that's what was sitting on our balance sheet here as an equity now we're going to convert over those 3,000 shares here uh, of preferred stock. So what we would do here, we would take again here for on our preferred stock, we're going to debit it or reduce our preferred stock by the 3,000 shares here at the $100 par value of a preferred stock here for a debit that here for $300,000. Now, what we're doing is we're converting it over here into common stock. So what we would do here, well, we'll we can go back and look at our common stock, what was sitting here. But for the preferred conversion here, we would it we would credit our common stock here for a hundred and five thousand dollars now that's based on the three thousand dollars are three thousand shares of preferred stock that's being converted here into seven shares here common stock at the five dollar par value of the common stock so here all you do is take that amount here three thousand times seven shares times the par value here so we would credit our common stock here for $105,000. So that's what uh, the conversion feature is going to give us here. Each uh, peop, uh, the owner or the people that here that are converting their preferred over, stock over are going to receive uh, seven shares of common stock here. And at the par amount here, we would record it here at $105,000. Now, the additional amount here goes into our additional paid in capital here for our common stock, the excess over a par here. So our preferred uh, uh, preferred stock, we would have credited it for the conversion here, we'd have credited that here for $195,000. That's simply looking at our arithmetic here, preferred stock conversion, those were just $300,000 uh, worth of preferred stock at a $3,000 at $100 par amount here, uh, less the par for a common stock par amount here of $105,000 on that conversion. The difference gives us here, 300,000 less 105,000 gives us, the difference goes into additional paid in hack capital here for a common stock here at $195,000 here. And just um, for reference here, only for reference, the common stock we had originally credited that here at $250,000 for its original issue here at par. That was the $5 par amount times the 50,000 shares. And then the remaining balance goes into um, additional paid in capital here 
for that original issue at 1250000 Simply the difference here between the um, issue price here, $30 less the par amount here, 5 that gives you $25 additional paid in capital here per share. And do the arithmetic and that comes out here. That really didn't become a factor here when on this conversion. All we were really looking at is uh, for our conversion here is where we, we had the preferred stock here and then a credit amount here, a preferred stock as an equity here, but we uh, had to debit out here the amount that was being converted here over into common stock. And based on this balance, and then our common stock got converted here. The uh, preferred stock got converted based on the common stock's par value here and the number of shares that were being converted here times uh, the number of shares that they received here. Uh, uh, for common stock. One preferred stock got seven shares of common stock and then there were 3,000 shares here of preferred stock converted and that all can added up here to credit or increase our common stock here $105,000 and then the balance between what we reduced here in our preferred stock here uh, on that conversion here of 300,000 and the uh, debit here and the credit here of 105,000 in our common stock flowed into additional paid in capital here of $195,000. Okay, so that takes care of our convertible preferred stock here, very basic, but just so you understand what's going on here. Now, let's look at the case here where we're just issuing this preferred stock and how it will be reported here in the shareholders equity section of the balance sheet. So again, here's the preferred stock it's, let's, it was issued here at a, in this case here at $109 per share here, and the par value is at $100 per share here. And again, we're going to issue 10,000 shares here. It's 8% 8 8 percent par dividend rate here. So what we would do here, our issue, what we would have our cash account here, what we would have received for those uh, preferred stocks, and then we'll just look at how we'd record this preferred stock here on our equity here on our balance sheet. So again, remember the preferred stock here is an equity. It's not a liability, although it has a lot of uh, forms here of a liability based on those dividend, dividend rates and so forth here. But again, for our issue price here, we would have had issued 10,000 shares at $109 per share here. That's the issue price here. That would have given us here uh, in our cash account, we would have received here $1,090,000. Okay, debit our cash here for $1,090,000. Then moving over to our e equity account here for we have for our preferred stock. Now remember you set up this preferred stock account as a separate account here from any of the other uh, equity accounts like the common stock or treasury stock so forth. This is set up as a separate account here. So our preferred stock, uh, we would um, credit that or increase that based on its par value of $100 per share, the 10,000 shares issued, that would that equals $1 million here. So we credit or increase our preferred stock here by $1 million. Then the balance between the cash that we received here and our par value goes into additional paid in capital here for preferred stock. That's really the excess over par and that's simply $90,000. So we had received here cash $1 million $90,000 less the par amount here that we uh, credited to our preferred stock here at $1 million. The difference gives us $90,000 and that goes into the preferred stock additional paid in capital. Okay, so that takes care of looking at our preferred stock here both uh, how you uh, would determine the uh, dividend uh, payments on your preferred stock here and just a simple convertibility feature here converting preferred stock into common stock and also just looking at how you would uh, issue and record here your preferred stock and just one last thing here just remember uh, the preferred stock you have to set up a separate equity account here on your balance sheet here and also uh, for both the preferred stock and the additional paid in capital here for preferred stock okay so that takes care of our uh, three basic examples here for dividends, convertible, convertibility, and just issuing our preferred stock.